8.2 transformations of logarithmic functions. So you've done so many transformations that you should find this really easy, right? How many transformations did you do in grade 11? Never ending. So today we're going to look at what it looks like when you have a logarithmic function in it. So log base 10. So these are just the basic base 10 ones that you can calculate on your calculator. Um, k x minus d plus c you know what all these things stand for quickly a is a vertical stretch or compression by a factor of a k is a horizontal stretch or compression by a factor of one over k remember x are weird d is a horizontal shift d units so in this case if this was a two it would be two units to the right if this ended up being negative two it would be two uh, sorry positive two would be two units to the left and plus C, of course, is your vertical translation up or down. So I mentioned this in, in 8.1, that it's easiest to find points on a logarithmic function by finding the points on its reciprocal function, i.e. the exponential function. So for this, the exponential function is 10 to the x. If I had a function that was, you know, log 4x, then this would be 4 to the power of x. So whatever the base is, that's the base of your exponential function that you want to find the points for. Okay, so and simply switch the variables. You can then apply the appropriate transformations to each point. So I'm going to do an example from your homework for you. Um, it's not anything really mind blowing here, but it needs to be covered so that you understand how transformations work. Okay, this is supposed to be an R here. My writing got a little crazy there. So it says R at x equals log base 10 of minus 2x minus 4. Now, you probably got caught up on this in grade 11. This is not in the proper format. The proper format is that the k is separate from the x, or the coefficient of x has to be 1. So that means you need to factor first, or you're going to have all the wrong direction and the wrong compression. So this is equal to, I didn't leave myself enough room for that one. So I'm going to say here, log base 10, square bracket, and I'm going to factor out a minus 2. And there you go. Okay, so let's just bring that over there. So this is the transformation that I want to apply to the function and the function is going to be 10 to the x. So I have x here and 10 to the x. So you want to pick some numbers that are both negative and positive so that you have something good to work with. Remember 10 to the negative 2 is 10 squared 1 over it. So that's 1 over 100, 1 over 10, anything to power 0 is 1, 10 to the 1, 10, 10 squared, 100. Okay, so these are kind of big numbers, right? We're going to have to graph this. So the mapping rule, oh, let's do the transformations first. What kind of transformations do I have here? So I have a negative sign here. So the negative means a reflection about the, now you have to figure out what axis it is. So anything in the brackets is a change to x. So if I'm flipping x's, I'm flipping about the y-axis. So reflection about the y-axis. One done. What does the 2 mean? So remember again, x's are weird. So if I have a 2 up front here, my k is going to be 1 over k. So that means it's going to be, and x's are all horizontal. So horizontal because they go this way, right? horizontal compression by a factor factor of 1 over 2. So it's a half. It's compressed by a half. And this plus 2 means horizontal, you could say shift or translation, depending on what your teacher likes you to say. Horizontal translation, 2 units left. Okay, so it says plus 2, it's minus 2, because it's actually a minus d, right? Okay, so I've got all the transformations, and now I need to find some points. 
So let's state what the mapping rule is going to be. What do I do to each of my values x and y? So nothing happens to the y, right? We don't have anything out here. If I had a plus 1, I'd say y plus 1. Or if I had a 2 out front of the logarithm here, I'd be 2y plus 2, something like that. But nothing happens to the y. So I don't have to worry about the y's, only the x's. So the x is going to be divided by 2 and negative. So I have negative 1 over k and then minus 2 and I do nothing to whatever the y values are. So now I'm going to reverse these because I'm going from, this is the exponential points, minus 2 in this, right? And I want the logarithmic points. So it's going to be 1 over 100 and minus 2. And 1 over 10 minus 1. And to each of these points, I'm going to apply this transformation. Um, 1 over 10, 1 and 0, 10 and 1, and 102. Okay, so I've got my points all listed. I'm going to apply this transformation. So minus x over 2, and my x is a 1 over 100. So I have 1 over 100 divided by 2. 1 over 100 divided by 2. Oh my goodness. Well, you could put this as a decimal. That might make things a little easier for you. So you could say this is 0 0.01. And then just divide that by 2. And subtract 2. So let's do that on a calculator just because, just because we're lazy here. So 0 0.01 divided by negative 2. Subtract 2. And I get minus 2.005. Minus 2.005, and I do nothing to the y's. Okay, so just to, to save some time here, I'm just going to tell you what the points are. You could draw them on your own. Minus 2.5 and 0. I'm doing this all in my head, of course, as I do it, right? Minus 7 and 1. No, I cheated. I did it before. Minus 52 and 2. Okay, so now I have all the points that I want to put on my graph over here. Now, can you tell me where the vertical asymptote is without any work here? Well, you might see that as we this got smaller, we got like 2.5, 2.05, 2.005, then would be minus 2.0005. So you might guess what it is, but you should also be able to tell me what it is because of this here. So it was shifted, horizontal shift, to the left two units. So um, I think I have my little graph from the last lesson here. So if I shift it, if I shift to the left, this asymptote is going to the left as well. So it's going to be over here. So I shifted to the left two units, and that gives me my vertical asymptote right here. x equals minus 2. Okay, so then I want to put some points on. So I have x is minus 2.05 and minus 2. Minus 2.05 and minus 1. So this is coming up really tight to this graph here, right? Minus 2.5 and, and 0. And then minus 7. Ooh, I think this was minus 7. I put that on there. Okay, so it's going like this. Boom, like that. It's not the greatest drawing, but it gives you the idea. Okay, so um, what's the domain and the range? What is the domain here? Well, domain is what values of x can I put in? I don't have any x values until I cross this asymptote. So that means x has to be less than minus 2, and x is an element of real numbers. And my range, my range is... Um, I guess I could say r to x. r to x is an element of real numbers because it's going down this way and it's also going up this way forever and ever and ever. So that's transformations. Now, um, if there's a specific one that you're having a lot of trouble with, you can um, ask me in the comments below and I'll be happy to do something for you. 
but I think this gives you a good enough idea and your um, transformation skills should be pretty darn sharp by now from when you learned all this in grade 11. Okay, so we'll be moving on. Talk to, you, talk to you soon. I won't be talking to you, but you could leave me a comment. That would be really nice. Please subscribe if you haven't. Um, the more subscribers, the happier I am. Bye.